quilting and I'm here with Marie and Vicki from Handy Quilter and today we're going to talk about filling those wide open spaces. Now we don't mean the ones in Wyoming and Idaho, we mean the ones here on your quilt. That's right. So I know that a lot of times when you've got those big empty blocks, quilters have a name for that, right? Property, real estate. So we want to make sure that we use that and fill that in the best way possible. And that scares a lot of quilters. Like, it really does. Oh, there's a lot of Empty White area. Space. Yes. <laughs> my quilting is going to show. <laughs> yes. And that can be really intimidating, especially for somebody who, you know, is a beginner or just thinks, oh, I'll just quilt it all over. That's fine. So and you could. You could do an edge to edge on this all over and it, it would be fine. It's always but, okay. But there's so much open space that gives you just the opportunity to showcase your quilting. That's perfect. So we've got two identical vintage tops here. And the reason we have vintage tops is we just happened to find these two that were identical. identical. We thought it would be a fun challenge for you two. Um, so we've got pieced by machine and by hand. On, on the same quilt. On the same quilt, yes. right. And they're not perfect. I mean, we're going to start no. with that. No, you can see. look at how imperfect they are. So if you were going to do some straight line quilting on this, you wouldn't have very straight lines. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah, so that's going to play mostly. into your decision making as mm -hmm. well. You really don't want to showcase some of those blocks that might have a little Im imperfections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Personality. Personality. Uh, <laughs> so now when you're looking at assessing the space on the quilt, how do you make those decisions to stay within the lines of the block and how do you make the decisions to go kind of beyond those seam lines? Well, let's look at the quilt. This quilt has a block here and then it has this block that's pieced, okay? Right. So let's just take this and define it and you see that, that that's a property. Mm -hmm. That gives me some good quilting real estate to put a beautiful motif in sure. or or really? break it up with rulers. And it's a nice square space, very predictable. Yes, and, yes. The, and this, where the pinwheels, it's uh, just the very same. So Another if I nice thought, square. If I want to take a motif and I could just plop it here and here, because then it's not dividing up the lines and because I have some little imperfections there, you know, I could do that. Okay. But we both like <laughs> to kind of define it here and, and put something that will, the sh quilting's going to showcase right and there. And maybe break out of those lines a little bit. Well, let's break out of those lines a little bit. What about if we decided that's our block? Okay, so that's a very different shape, but really might be more interesting. And if it hid those seam lines, you're yeah. going to get a different look to the quilt. Yeah, you would treat it as if there are no seam lines there. So this area is going to get more attention and your imperfect piecing is kind of going to go. And then you can, can treat the each one of these as a separate little motif, maybe as a spiral in here or some type of a curly vine, something through there so that it's not, you're not doing something in each one of those little triangles, but okay. you're doing it as its own individual block. And we've got some examples of those where there's a swirl in the triangle, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or you've approached the whole pinwheel as a, its own tri as its own space, its own square. Yes. Right. All right. right. Now, if you were going to break this block up in another way, don't, the example we have up on the wall, the quilt on the wall really, really broke outside those lines. That's right. Or I should say inside those lines, really. <laughs> so what it is is it was just some Sunbonnet Sioux squares, and they had cornerstones, the little pink cornerstones, but I just put, made it like a 14-inch block so that it would fit in the quilt, just ignored those seam lines, and then turned the little Sunbonnets on point. And just just made, with a frame, just, just with a quilted frame and yeah. made them look like a block on point. Yeah, yeah. That's so amazing. using that property in mm -hmm. a different way, which is what I like to do is I will take the block itself and then look at how many different ways I can break it up. So Vicki would start with this one. I would start with this one. So let's one. put this back over. Okay. Right, let's just get some This little, is the block we're going to work with. Okay, so... There are options. There are for quilters that are just starting out. So here's a packet that you can get. Um, this is Karen Emerson's Simply Feathers. And there's some different designs that we kind of traced out on uh, on preview, preview paper. Or on uh, Golden Threads paper, yeah. which is great to help preview. 
So it's a sheer, almost like an mm -hmm. old-fashioned tracing paper, mm -hmm. tissue paper, yeah. but you can see where you're going. And you can actually place that on there and stitch right through it if you okay. want. Okay, great. So if you decide, well, let's put just a round motif on there, and okay, then you've got that. some, you know, some blank property here that you could do a stipple or some um, echoing behind that. Sure. To, to pop those feathers. So that stays within that block it seam does. line. Now here's a square one. Okay. And I, I pr maybe would take my proportional scale and I would enlarge it so that it would come out to the edges, but... I think I would make a ruler edge and so a frame, frame it, that, mm -hmm. you know, Which I think that. would be really pretty. Yeah. And basically this proportional ruler is something where you start with the measurement that you have and then the measurement that you're wanting to go to and it tells you how big to enlarge something mm -hmm. on a photocopier. Or, yeah. or reduce the or size. Or reduce it. Exactly. Those yeah, are so and, helpful. And you know what? For those who don't do math well, you those are so helpful. You could take this and actually reduce it down and give it a, a larger, like a little sashing look in there just sure, by yeah. the quilting. Yep. Well, and then could you also reduce that down and maybe use it in these other blocks? You could. That That's pretty tight, pretty tight. quilting for a little. Okay. But, yeah. but you could find something similar because Karen probably has something in her in her uh, Packet. collection. In the packets that yeah. have yeah. other yeah. sizes, that uh -huh. kind of thing. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. But let's take it, let's move that aside, and let's see if we decide to do it this way, what would we do? Okay? I know sometimes you doodle in notebooks and that kind of thing to get ideas of you know, what type of pattern you might use. So that's a good place so, to go for some inspiration, right? Yeah, doodle first and then take them and take them to the quilt. And it always, when you see it on the quilt, it kind of tells you, yeah, this yeah. is the right one. So now what would you do to break up this space? Or to not break to, it up, but to, and to include fill it. This. Right. So this, these are like antique quilts. They're just traditionally, they call for feathers, right? Right. Mm -hmm. you yeah. feathers? Yeah. And so I think, that I'm going to just draw four different spines of feathers. So if I take, find my center, and then as I draw this out and quilt a spine there, and the same spine here, did I do them all the same? I did, okay. Now I'm gonna put feathers on both sides of that spine, but I'm going to just do a little dotted line here and that's not something that you'll see in the quilting, right. but that helps me, helps determine where this feather here, they can't go over into that. Okay, so defining that space a little mm -hmm. bit for you. Yes, so then as I quilt these feathers, and I wanna fill this space right here, come in, Keep stretching, keep stretching. Stretch there. <laughs> then I could either quilt my way back down and then start again. See, there's my, I need to define that. Put a little feather, build the feathers larger. I think that'd be beautiful. So you really are filling that space that you've defined. That's right, and that feather would, would be exactly, I mean, they're not gonna be exact, right. because I may choose to, to work this a little in here and put a feather in here, and then it encroached into that area, but it's okay. And that's okay, because it's gonna fill that area so beautifully, and then you're gonna be, have these pinwheels yes. kinda set off. Yes, because this, each one of these will be filled with feather, so each pinwheel is gonna be treated individually. That's a great idea, I love to see how that space got broken up differently than I would have, you know, I would have just put a block here because that would have That's been That's what you see. I also love that you all experiment as much as, I think that gives other people permission to, like, you're experts at this. You don't just put it on the machine and start going. You really are trying out to see what's going to look best in that space. And I think that's very encouraging for those of us who are beginners. Yeah. That we, we can practice, we can try this and wipe it off and start over again. That's right. Have a a committee, a friend committee to say, I have this quilt and I need help. Yep. So <clears> let's <throat> sit down, take some plastic preview paper from Handy Quilter and draw out things. If you don't like what it is like, then put on another one and then Marie will grab her, her <laughs> marker and she will totally come up with something different. And Perfect. 
What a great idea. Now you two are both going to, we've challenged you to quilt these quilts, each of you, because we know that the style will be very different for each one. So Vicki, how did you end up quilting this quilt? Well, I really liked the feathers that I drew on the plastic, but I decided to add a little bit of a channel around the whole block. And so I, using my ruler, I channeled around it and just put a motif in each one. Perfect. And how did you do it, Marie? I totally went with rulers, so I broke up those spaces and did a little different than the traditional. No seam line following for you. <laughs> so no matter how you decide to break up your wide open spaces, we know that these tips will help you do it more successfully.